Okay. Um, so I'm talking to Alex Poon. He uh, built Simon Signs. Uh, Alex, t uh, t tell us about it. Sure. Um, so basically, we took for the AT&T Hackathon the accelerometer in the Samsung Galaxy Gear, and we used AT&T's text to speech API to basically create a practice partner for practicing sign language. Turns out there are over 70 million people in the world who actually use sign language as their primary language. But the big complaint is that it's hard to find a practice partner. So we created a practice partner. So let me just show you how it works. All right, hopefully it picks up. I'll get this one wrong on purpose. That's Jewish. Try again. Awesome. Simon says, I'll eat ice cream. Ice cream. Good job. And so forth. So basically, it prompts you to do a sign. You try to remember how to do it. You do it, and it uses the accelerometer to determine whether or not you got it right. Okay. So what about signs that that are more on, on the right hand? Yeah. So uh, sign language, at least American sign language, is usually either one-handed or two-handed. And so, in fact, you probably noticed some of the signs I did were two-handed. We were using just half the, half the signal and still getting it right. So it's actually pretty pretty cool that the watch has enough fidelity in its, in its gyroscope and accelerometer to still be able to do the match. Okay. So uh, can you tell me more about this uh, ATA API? Yeah, the API, we use the text-to-speech API for speaking the words. So the great thing about that is, number one, it has two different voices. I don't know if you noticed that there was a woman speaking as Simon and then... When I do the sign, it's a man speaking. So we use the text-to-speech API so that we don't have to record all the words, thousands of words, using our own voices. And where do you get the, the, the data from, the patterns that you have to match? Good question. So we actually didn't technically build a sign language detector. We built a gesture recognizer. So we can actually train anything we want. I could train... Um, uh, my name, make up my own gesture, and it, it would record that pattern and then match against it. So as long as you train it, you can practice it. So who trained it? Uh, I trained it. Some other teammates trained it. Um, but anybody can train it. You can train whatever you want. You can even train um, athletic moves. So at one point, we were training tennis forehands and tennis backhands just to see if whether or not the program would be able to detect a backhand versus a forehand, topspin versus slice, and it does. But for our hackathon, we turned it into a sign language practice partner. So what are you going to do with it now? We're not sure. We might, um, to make it uh, more robust, we would probably take all these patterns that are in training patterns and put them in the cloud. Currently, all the words, we have about 30 phrases in here that we've trained so far, are on the watch. And the watch is actually doing all the processing of interpreting the signs. But if you have thousands or maybe two thousands of words, the watch's processing power, I don't think, I don't know for sure, I don't think would be sufficient. So we take all those patterns, put them in the cloud. When you do your signs, the pattern would be uploaded to the server in real time. The detection would be done on the server side, much like Apple Siri. And then uh, that computation in the cloud is much more powerful than on a local device and we'd be able to do um, thousands of phrases. Uh, if someone wants to work with you on that, how can they get in touch? So uh, alex at bonfiremedia.com is my email address. And what do you do for a living? So yeah, good question. Bonfire Media, actually, we don't do sign language. We don't do, we haven't even done wearables yet. This is strictly for the hackathon. Uh, Bonfire Media makes games and apps for iOS and Android. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.